Hello from the Tukas Copy TV studio in Geneva. We are back with our technical analysis with Jean-Francois of Zazak from the fintech company Management Joint Trust with their product FinGraphs.com. Jean-Francois, welcome to the studio. Hi, Daniel. So the quantitative easing of the European Central Bank moves on and so rapidly goes the euro uh, rate. So it's the most rapid sell-off in years. C how long can this go on? Well, we'll have a look at it today. Uh, we are on our FinGraphs uh, mosaic uh, hourly chart, so the perspective over the next few weeks. Uh, we have Euro dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, Euro Swiss, gold, DAX, uh, SMI and S&P futures. And we'll have a look at the Euro. So yeah, it is uh, the most rapid sell-off in years. And in fact, our, uh, our targets uh, are, are, are being challenged. Uh, uh, the move has been so quick that it went through our corrective targets first, our impulsive targets, and left our impulsive two targets for very extended move uh, behind them at uh, slightly above 110. Uh, we've been back in our historic uh, directory over the last few weeks to see uh, how often such situations do happen. And we've found only 20 incidences uh, over the last hundred years. So it's, uh, it's, well, we were looking at large indices, uh, not at all the stocks, but it's a very rare phenomenon. And, uh, and uh, what was interesting to note is that it usually doesn't uh, preclude a major top. It's usually a sign of, of market strength. Uh, it's often followed by an intermediate bottom or top, but in the end, the trend resumes and keeps on going for uh, another year or so, at least. So um, we don't think the downtrend on the euro is, is over. Uh, at the moment, we are in a, quite a, a large exaggeration, uh, but we cannot confirm a bounce yet. Uh, we'll, we'll go back to the investor's view and look at the weekly chart first, which is the perspective over the next few quarters. Uh, our targets uh, have been revised down with accelerating volatility in this move, and we now point to uh, circa uh, uh, 102.70 uh, as, uh, as, um, as uh, the downside boundary of our impulsive targets. Uh, yet, if you look here, the risk index is just at the beginning of an oversold position. It usually can stay quite a while in this oversold and really needs to reverse to mark a bottom, uh, be it an intermediate bottom. And so at this stage, uh, we believe we're still in the acceleration phase on uh, this weekly chart. Uh, we've also tri triangulated uh, a possible euro target using its crosses through the yen and through uh, the cable. And uh, we get to a possible targets around uh, 0 0.975 uh, towards mid-year. So uh, that would be another, another seven, eight figures to go. So. Um, at the moment, on the weekly charts, we're still in a very strong downtrend and we don't think it's over. Um, on the dailies, well, again, you might say, yeah, we are very extended. When is the reversal coming? Well, also here, we're just entering the oversold uh, zone. Uh, we think there's still some work uh, to be done. Uh, we really need to see a reversal here to see anything happen. On the hourly, also quite overextended. It looked like an intermediate bottom uh, 10 days ago. We had a bit of a reaction, but now it's a resumed downtrend. Our impulsive two targets are leading us down to 104, or where we were Friday, but between 104 and 102. Uh, then we could probably expect a reaction up, probably uh, towards uh, third week, the end of March into early April. Uh, we would probably expect four or five figures of potential. But in essence, uh, we still believe the daily and the weekly are heading down, to, to down towards mid-year. And so um, at the moment, it's too early to confirm this bounce. Uh, and uh, we, we're still in a continuous downtrend. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this extensive view on the euro. If we look at gold, so there has been a movement down as well in the 1100 region. Mm -hmm. What is your system saying about that? Well. Uh, gold uh, has been in a long-term downtrend on a weekly chart. Uh, it is uh, still pointing lower, possibly between 1,200 and uh, where we're below 1,200 and uh, 1,000. If you take an average, you have an average target around 1,100. Um, there's more time left in this move, so it doesn't seem finished yet. So uh, we're basically in the context of the long-term downtrend, which is not over yet. The daily had a quite a nice correction up. Uh, during the end of the year in uh, January, uh, it has now uh, resumed its downtrend. 
and uh, our targets are now pointing to uh, possible levels over the next few months between 11.45 and 10.85. So again here, the move is not over yet. You see a bit of exaggeration here uh, with our two envelopes touching each other. You see an oversold situation on the risk index. Uh, we may be in a situation where we could expect to bounce. We need to confirm that on the hourly. And the hourly still seems to be moving lower. Uh, it did have a, a slight reaction uh, last week, a very flattish uh, reaction, uh, consolidation, and now seems to be resuming the downtrend again. Targets here between 11.43 and 11.20. So this 11.40, 11.20 kind of uh, works quite well with the daily also. So in 11.20, 11.30, you could expect some kind of a reaction, but overall the trend is still down also. Mm -hmm. So if we look at the equities today, the German uh, stock market had an all-time high in the 12 thousand region the DAX is now uh, seen and uh, so there's quite a divergence with the S&P. I think that's, that, that's the important thing. I think uh, you have the DAX here which on an hourly basis is in an uh, impulsive two target up and you have the S&P which is in an, an impulsive down. And it seems like the strength of the dollar is, is, is having s quite a large impact on, on, on the US equity markets. Um, you could also add into that that uh, the fact that the U.S. dollar is so strong is quite uh, disinflationary for uh, the U.S. Uh, uh, for the U.S. Um, in general for the economy, and uh, that it may jeopardize the efforts to raise the interest rates uh, from uh, mid-year. So I think there's a special uh, notice to be had on uh, the Fed meeting uh, this week, and uh, to uh, watch the wording to see if in some way that they're going to try to tame this uh, dollar rise, which is uh, starting to have an impact. Now, focusing on, um, on the S&P, we're still in an impulsive two uptrend on uh, the weekly. We still think we do have the potential to move up to uh, 2200 to 2400 over the next few quarters. It's still an uptrend, it's an extended uptrend, but it's still, it's, it's still pointing higher. Uh, on a um, daily basis, the reaction is a bit uh, stronger than we thought, but uh, the trend is still up and we can make it back above uh, 2100 up to almost 2200 over the next few months. And uh, then the hourly has gone through its corrective targets. Um, it's now pointing lower to um, between uh, 2020 or 1990 in worst cases. Um, Remains to be seen if we're going to reach these uh, levels. I see also the risk indexes, which is quite oversold here. So we should have at least uh, some kind of an intermediate reaction. I just wanted to have a look at the trader's view to try to find some uh, levels which might be interesting. Well, we just went through one. We were uh, slightly, we were in a corrective up uh, before the show. Now we just went through on this S&P future into impulsive targets. So that may be a good sign uh, for um, uh, for the performance of, of the U.S. equity markets over the next day or so. So, I don't want to be too negative here on the hourly. The daily is still heading up, the weekly is still heading up. It does seem like they have an oversold situation. So, I'm, I'm quite curious to see what kind of an impact uh, this move up will have uh, this week. Mm -hmm. Jean-François Aufzazak from The Management Joint Trust, thank you very much for being here today. Thank you, Daniel. And thanks for your interest. Newest interviews and updates you also find on the website of Dukas Copy TV. Have a great day and see you next time.